I used to believe in evolution, but not anymore. I now believe that the entire universe and everything in it, including our solar system, was created by God as described in the Bible. Of course, many scientists today disagree strongly with this idea. These men and women believe that no creation occurred. They believe that the solar system formed billions of years ago without a creator being involved. In this video, you'll discover why their model is wrong. Of course, this won't prove that the creation model is right. It's impossible to use science to prove any historical event happened. All we can do is see which scenario fits the evidence the best. And that's what this video is all about. Most people have been told that all the evidence points toward evolution. As we tour the solar system together, ask yourself this question. Are the planets and moons consistent with these evolutionary ideas or not? I think you'll see that the answer is no. I think you'll see that the evidence is perfectly consistent with the creation viewpoint instead. So let's discuss these two opposing models. The creation model is based on the Bible. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible doesn't give us a specific date for this event, but from other passages in the Bible, we can calculate that this would have been about 6,000 years ago. On the other hand, someone who believes in evolution denies the biblical account. The dominant evolutionary model today is called the Solar Nebula model. According to this model, our solar system formed from a swirling cloud of gas and dust about 4.5 to 4.6 billion years ago. The evolutionary story goes something like this. In the beginning, there was gas. About 4.6 billion years ago, an enormous cloud of gas collapsed and started to swirl. Most of the gas went into the middle and became our sun. The rest of it swirled around the new sun and started to condense into grains of dust. As the grains of dust orbited the sun, they started to stick together and became clumps of dust. Then the clumps stuck together to become little rocks. The little rocks stuck together to become big rocks. After enough time had passed, the gas had turned into huge asteroids. These asteroids stuck together to become the planets we see today. Astronomers have a special name for these asteroids. They're called planetesimals, which means little planets. Since you probably haven't heard this word before, I'm going to call them asteroids instead. It means basically the same thing anyway. For example, most secular astronomers believe that the asteroids we see in our solar system today are leftover planetesimals that never quite got it together to form planets. Evolutionists are confident that their model is correct. After all, it explains why all the planets orbit the sun in the same direction. It also explains why the solar system is flat today, with all the planets lining up in a disk shape as they orbit the sun. Plus, it explains why the inner planets are rocky, and the outer planets are made of gas and ice. Supposedly, the heavier rocky materials were able to condense close to the sun, while the lighter materials were more volatile and could only condense further away from the sun. Sounds good, doesn't it? The problem is that it doesn't work. It turns out that you can't build planets like the evolutionists say. You can build clumps of dust, certainly. We know that dust particles stick together. Just look under your furniture and see the dust bunnies there for proof. Well, experiments in space have shown that dust bunnies will form in a vacuum, too. The problem is that once you have big clumps of dust, and maybe even some small pebbles, they don't grow together anymore. They start impacting each other too fast to stick together. Instead, they start breaking each other up in the collisions. Gravity isn't strong enough to overcome this until after the rocks have formed into small asteroids. So, despite the fancy computer animations you see on science videos, there's no way to get from dust clumps to planets. Evolutionary astronomers know this is true. That's why you see quotes like this one in the astronomy textbooks. Once these planetesimals have been formed, further growth of planets may occur through their gravitational accretion into large bodies. Just how that takes place is not understood. So before we even discuss any planets or moons, the evolutionary theory is breaking down already. It can't produce the asteroids it needs to build the planets. Will it do any better when we examine the actual planets and moons themselves? Let's take a look and see. Welcome back to Truth Seekers. So Jay, dust formed into grains of sand which formed into asteroids. but. According to science, they're not going to stick together. So why don't they tell us that in, uh, in, in the school systems? But they just say, well, we know evolution is a fact that, you know, the Big Bang's a fact. And it all, 
came about just from a big bang and here we are. And uh, how many of you guys out there knew about these dust particles and the fact that the impact of them hitting each other and grains if they do form hitting each other are more powerful than gravity at that point in time and so that they're not going to stick together. So that's the beginning problem and it goes on from there. I checked on the name of that guy who he used as a quote there, quote from uh, this guy Harwit, I think it was his name. Yeah, Martin Harwit. And um, he's a really well known astronomer, really highly thought of among all secular scientists and everything like that. And he's the one who said, We don't really know how. It doesn't really happen. We, we don't re know how it really stuck together. We don't, you know. And um, he, he worked at Cornell, and this thing, he got a 2007 ASP annual award winner. Um, he's, he's been uh, more currently, well, through 95, he was the um, director of the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and before that, his group at Cornell made contributions to our understanding of the galaxy through its observations in many different areas and infrared astronomy and all sorts of stuff. And so that's a start, and it's going to build from there where their model just doesn't work for anything, it seems. And, and yet, students are told this is a fact, and it's all evolution. And you got to wonder why, why do they hide all this? You know, and, and I know it's because down deep people don't want a God who is going to make demands of us of any type of demand of any changes in our life, um, even though it's for our betterment. All of his demands are, are they? Are they not, Jay? No, d <clears throat> no different than you know bosses at work or parents or school teachers you know authority there's a reason there there is authority out there in in order to teach and correct and to train and and, and god being the creator is the ultimate authority and you know mike i i never wanted to submit to him um because then i would be held accountable for my actions and deep down me knowing me that wasn't a good thing but lo and behold, when he presented uh, an advocate for that, those deep down sins inside of me, and, and I saw that, um, what an incredible freedom that was. And, and what an incredible enlightenment, I guess is a word, to now see the cosmos for what it truly is. Um, to see his beauty and order in, in all things and the incredible vastness and then you take that Mike and you go and look it up in this written word that he gave left us and he he talked about it 3,500 years ago now go stepping back a minute though you never would have found it and I wouldn't have found it if we weren't troubled by things in reality in life that made us wonder about ourselves about about mm -hmm. truth, is there greater meaning? Because both of us, we were rebels. I mean, <laughs> we, we only know this, folks, is because, you know, we got to a point where we were really struggling, and by reading this book, it enlightens us because it explains why we think the way we think, because the Creator who made our minds knows why we think. He knows every thought in, in our minds. We've yeah, got, we've and, got to, go okay. ahead. Mark, and, we'll take the call in a second. And, you know, Mike, it took away the confusion of the thought process and trying to figure out who am I, where did I come from, why am I here, and, and brought an absoluteness to it. And, and that in itself, Mike, I, I got became so free. Just that Absolutely. alone. Absolutely, me too. It just, that's it's what it incredible. Does. That's what it does. Well, let's let's, let's okay. hear from Mark. Mark, how, what would you like to share with us? <clears throat> Hi, Mark. Oh, I don't know. You don't know? I'm not sure. Well, I do. I don't know how to start, though. But uh, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Well, it's uh, your astronomy and the beginning and all that. I think the problem is uh, God came here and the planet was already here, so there is evolution. 